behind me now is the next, the Scania next generation truck. This is the G410 Prime Mover, which, yeah, which was just launched here. This next generation Scania was first launched over in Europe in around 2016, and it's it has just been launched here, I think, uh, about two months ago at the moment. So, a lot of improvements have come into this truck. According to Scania, uh, about 20 billion kroner or 2.5 billion US dollars has been invested into making this truck what it is today. If you sat in one, you will know where the money went. It is incredibly unique in terms of trucks. This is one truck which I think actually feels like it has plastics and materials from say something like a Volkswagen passenger car rather than a commercial vehicle. It's actually that good inside. So many things new in this truck, so which is so much that a person like me who's actually bumbles through things at all, who can't remember much, we've gotten who you're gonna see Tom, Cold Fuse, who is the pre-sales director in charge of everything to do with selling the truck. He knows the truck inside and out. To the fullest, he will explain to us what this truck is inside and oh. out. What can you tell us about this truck first? Well, of course, the appearance is very different. Um, you can see that we have an improved cab structure. The cab is much stronger than the previous one. We've paid extra emphasis on the aerodynamics of the vehicle. Small gap. The vehicle has over here, very sleek design, so the aerodynamic has uh, drastically improved. Um, if you look at the A-pillars, the A-pillars on this particular vehicle are fairly straight up, straight up mounted. The reason for that is the visibility. We've also made them in such a shape that it doesn't hamper the, uh, the visibility for the driver. It comes with a drag foil. Uh, the drag foil, yeah. The drag foil is... Okay, on the, on the front. Yeah, let's talk about... All the, all the units are fitted with the H7 headlamps oh, okay. and the uh, LED DRL, they time for running light. That's standard on all trucks that we have in Malaysia. The, the radiator has been increased in the new truck range. Okay. For the improved uh, cooling performance. That good. has been done. We can still open it. It was available in the previous model. This can be opened. You can sit on it, but it's also good for holding yourself here and cleaning the front screen. Yeah. Oh. To do the daily checks, you can easily access this. Ah, uh, yes. The the... external storage. Okay. The storage box can be accessed from outside as well as inside. Oh, you can also. Right. Yeah. So you put right. things in here, but once you're sleeping in the cab, you don't need to go out of the cab to get your things. Just open it from the inside. On the S cab, there's even a possibility to have another storage room here, which mm. is not accessible from the inside, so in case you have something that's smelly or dirty things, you can put it in. Yeah, so you can, we can keep your, our durians in yes. the, yes. yeah, so no problem storing durians or blachan in Malaysia. <laughs> you can put it in the S-cap <laughs> in the S-cap Yep. That's true. The vehicle can also be equipped with side skirts. These are normally, they are closing that's the an That's an option, that's okay. An option. Available the single drive axle, or the 4x2 and the 6x2. Mm -hmm. We have also the buggy with both driven axles. It's a six by four. We have even all wheel driven vehicles that are available in Malaysia. Different wheelbases, various wheelbases, different fuel tanks. We have in this particular case 200 liters and 350 liters on the other side, with oh, okay. total capacity of 550 liters. Um, but it, since it's a modular system, you can basically order any particular capacity. So usually they ask, How much is a truck? Yeah. Then I said, I cannot answer that question because it is. Limitless when it comes to customization, so it depends on the truck. Like, say, fuel tanks can be customized, the wheelbase can be extended. Right. How many, how big you want the cabin to be, how small you yeah. want the cabin to be. Talking about the cab, as I said, we have the, the P, the G, the R, and the S. The S comes with the flat floor. Okay. This is new with the new uh, generation Scania. Yeah, your flagship, flagship model. Correct. Okay. P, G, and R size we have, even though this is an improved. Uh, this is an increased cap space. I mean, these caps are way bigger than the previous model. Uh, we also have them in different lengths. We have them in what we call 20 cap. They are with yeah, sleeper cap. Yeah. This is a sleeper cap. This is, this a, is a 20 cap. cap. Okay. 20 cap. You 
can have them in the lower bat, the upper bat, or both, mm -hmm. or even an upper shell on the top. Then we have the 17 gap, which is a sort of intermediate, it's a day gap, but mm. it has a resting area. So it's like a day bit kind of thing for the drivers. Right. So okay. if you want to relax, you can still, uh, there's a, uh, let's say a resting area behind the seat, so you still can use that. Then there is the 14 gap, which is just the driver compartment, which is often used in urban applications as well as the, the construction. One more thing, the wheelbase of this particular vehicle has uh -huh. been increased with 50 millimeter. It sounds a little, but it does quite a lot. It's also why the front overhang is, uh, is shorter, and this gives you improved handling and improved brake performance. So the longer wheelbase actually helps on handling? It does. Yeah, I, I think it would help on stability and straight line. But what about cornering? Does it actually affect cornering? Or because there's less overhang up front, it's not as affected? Well, the turning circle, curve to curve, will be affected by the wheelbase. But if you go wall to wall, but you, you're familiar with that principle, since the uh, extra wheel, the extension of the wheelbase has been taken from the front overhang, you don't feel the difference. I see. Okay. What about brakes? Let's talk about the brakes. The brake system would be nice. Are there any brake changes or upgrades over the this one or? Well, as I said, due to the longer wheelbase and the shorter front overhang, the brake performance has improved. Okay. Um, so a couple of meters less than we had before. The brake system as such is, is fairly similar as what we had before. Uh, they're equipped with drum brakes. We have drum brakes and disc brakes. Um, this particular truck? This particular truck has drum brakes because that's more the industry standard customers still oh they still prefer drums prefer drums in many mm. cases even though the, the discs are lighter and also the discs are less sensitive to fading so mm -hmm. if you for example go downhill uh, and you need to brake a lot of course use the retarder where possible if you have it but if you don't have it the disc brakes are less sensitive for fading for overheating okay we, we have optimized the braking system for okay operation. okay we have equipped it with uh, parking brakes at least on two axles. Okay. Uh, for safety reasons. Okay, let's go back to the engine again. So, we have the six cylinders. Yeah, there is a nine liter five cylinder. Okay. Which is ranging from 250 up to uh, 310 horsepower. Okay. And there is the 13 liter, 360 to 460. And then we have a V8, which is 560 horsepower. This is the G410. Correct. 410 horsepower. 2015 Newton meters of torque. The gearbox is, a, is an Opticruise, Scanning Opticruise gearbox. It has 12 speed, uh, two brawler gears. Um, and Opticruise basically means that it's an automated gearbox. So it's a, an automated manual gearbox. gearbox. <laughs> it's like an, it's an AMT. If, to put it in simpler terms, is it an automated manual transmission? That's what it is. Yes. So the clutch as well as the gear shifting is done automatically, but the inside is like a manual gearbox. So you have the advantage of uh, the automatic gearbox in terms of driving. It only comes with two pedals, uh, but you don't have the penalty of the torque converter because the inside, the internal friction, etc., is like a manual. So you have the, the best of both. Um, the OptiCruise comes in four performance modes. It comes with standard is basically a compromise between fuel economy as well as hill climbing. Then it comes in economy mode where you really look at fuel saving and the driver can change it on the dashboard itself. Then there is power mode which we normally do not use on particular trucks like these. Power modes are especially suitable for long for heavy haulage so you really want to pull over 200 tons etc. And then there is the off-road mode which we normally use for off-road vehicles, all-wheel drive etc. But on this particular model that's not the case. The driver can switch between these different modes themselves and that can all be done in the cluster. Uh, the gearbox in many cases comes with the retarder. The retarder is available. The retarder is an okay. automatic and manual. Mm -hmm. So you can, on the lever on the side of the steering wheel, you can use this manually. Yeah. But it also activates when you have the pedal. Press the pedal, when you press it slightly, first the retarder comes in. If you press it harder, the service brake goes across. Famous is the so called brake blending. So it takes a little bit of time before the oil in the retarder comes up. So, therefore, if you press the brakes at a sudden moment, first of all, the service brakes come on. As soon as the retarder fills, it slowly takes over a little bit 
away from the service brakes and it takes over uh, the braking performance. So the retardation does not change, but the uh, the way it is braking is different. We basically transfer braking performance from the service brakes to the retard, and this uh, makes your brakes last. But it's basically exhaust braking in some ways, or it's not exhaust braking. No, there is an exhaust brake on this. Oh, as well. this is also part of it, but this but is. The retarder is an extension of gearbox. It's on the outgoing part of the gearbox. It has nothing to do with the, the gear shifting. I see. So it is a, a retarder. Is nothing else than you can see. There's a, a bath of oil. You have scoops running inside, and that's that's of course there is a friction. Yeah? And due to the friction, the vehicle slows down. Okay, that's another way of slowing down the vehicle. Correct. Right. So there is an exhaust brake on this vehicle, but the, the retarder is connected to the gearbox. It's extremely powerful. It is uh, 4,100 newton meter. And also when you change gear, it keeps on performing. If you have an exhaust brake or an engine brake, as soon as you change gear, it's, it's uh, momentarily disconnected. And you don't have that with the retarder. The retarder, regardless if you're changing gear or not, it constantly gives you the retardation you need. And it's extremely, extremely powerful. It will save you a lot on the service brake. New range of gearboxes are equipped with a lay shaft brake. Okay. The lay shaft brake is an intermediate shaft inside the gearbox, and we have mounted a tiny little brake on it. So as soon as you change gear, we brake that particular shaft, so gear shifting can be done quicker and smoother. The advantage is especially coming in when you go uphill. So normally, if you go uphill, and gear shifting takes so it takes time, you you lose speed. In this case, it's that quick. That up again. It especially comes into play when you're when you're going on a, on a hill. Yeah. You really need to change. You want to change gear but as it needs quickly as possible. But it also helps you to go to change gear smoother. So even in flat operations, it's quicker and smoother. Let's talk about safety. We have of course the improved cap structure, which is uh, very strong in terms of uh, crash performance. Our vehicles come with H7 headlamps, LED. This is to be seen by others, so constantly during the day the lights are on. The vehicle, we have available lane departure warning. So if you drift away from the lane, okay. you get a warning. We have the advanced emergency braking system available. That basically means that if sensors detect the vehicle or an obstacle in the front and we are approaching it and the driver does not react, the vehicle basically does it. The vehicle does it for us. We have on, on ADR, on, on uh, two transport, we have airbags, we also have the side curtain airbags. Okay, that's a full option set up, right? On if ADR, it, yes. On ADR. But for say, something like this? For this particular vehicle, a standard, we yes. not equipped with the airbag, but it's available for the It's airbag. available, okay, alright. Even the steering is not fitted with an airbag yet? That's an option, okay, okay, alright. We have ESP as well, electronic stability program, available. Okay. ABS, EBD. Oh, you have um, the usual. Well, ESP. Yeah, stability well, program. ESP, you e have EBS. Yes, yes. Yeah, like right. Yeah, I'm going to go around the sound. I'm going to go around the sound.